I just discovered a brand new Visual Studio Code setup that's kind of replacing both Klein and Raw Code for me. And yes, I know I have made ton of videos talking about how good Raw Code is and how reliable Klein is. But this extension combines a feature of both of them and both of them together in one place. And it works like magic. The name of this new extension is Kilo Code and it's brand new. As you can see here, there is less than 6,000 installation on Visual Studio Code. So in the next few minutes, I'm going to show you the complete setup. It takes less than five minutes to create. And I will show you also why this setup will save you a lot of time and make you more productive. And I will give you tips to improve the quality of your code result. I think that's enough talking. Let's dive in. Kilo code, it means thousand of code, the name behind the name of the extension. And I found the reference of it here, generate kilos of code for free in Visual Studio Code. If you sign up using your Google account, you will get $15 worth in free for Cloud Sonus 3.7 usage without needing to put your credit card, which is a very good, actually. I found it in a blog inside the website itself. This is the website of Kilo Code. It basically promotes itself as the best AI coding agent for Visual Studio Code because it combined the feature of Klein, which is the first highly praised coding assistant in Visual Studio Code, and Raw Code, which is the one that took Klein and built on top of it and made it better, in my opinion, and also their own additions. It's available at Visual Studio Code, Cursor, Windsurf, and their IDE, which all of them are Visual Studio Code based editors. And you can see here it have the orchestrator mode, the architect mode, the coding mode, and the debug mode. All the stuff is exist in raw code actually. And here is this feature comparison between Klein and raw code and Kilo. And as you can see here, Kilo is combining a lot of stuff from raw code and Klein and adding on top of them by adding, for example, open router with the 5% markup and it give you 20 dollar for free credits the fireworks provider which is a super fast inference for pricing they have two different plans right now the first one is the kind of open source which is completely free you will use it like however you like but you have to put your own api key inside the extension like raw code and Klein and all this kind of extension and the enterprise one is still not available for basically public you have to contact them to get it and now let's set up this extension go to your extension tab inside Visual Studio Code or Cursor or Windsurf or their IDE and write Kilo and don't forget to write code because there is a lot of similarity of other extension here and the first one have this kind of very cool icon and you can install it and you, and you can see here it's brand new there is not a lot of installation but and I, I am expecting in the coming two months this extension will take off like crazy and after the installation is done, you will get a similar UI to this. It have the same exact thing from raw code we have here on the far left, starting the modes like the architect, the code, the debugging, the orchestrator, which is the boomerang mode, which I talked about in a previous video. It's amazing. And we have also bes beside it the models. I only plugged in the Google models. And it can tell you what model that you're using exactly right now. And you have here your enhance prompting button and adding context like images and adding problems or pasting URL. And of course, the enter or send message button. And we have, we have here button for feedback. It's almost similar to raw code exactly. We have also here the settings, which is almost basically just raw code with additional stuff. We have here the provider, the first thing that we have. You can create profile for different models. Plug in any API key with the provider that you have. And key note over here, when you go to the auto approve, everything will be available. Make sure to only leave read and mode and subtask, maybe the MCB if you want to, but don't leave the right one open and the browser one is open. Because I noticed when I started using it, it automatically write every single code that come in and it that's not good at all even with the model that we have right now there is still some issue with the code that they generate maybe they miss something they are not creating the exact code that you want so you always have to approve your and read the code 
by yourself before approving it. There is also the browser capability. You can modify the checkpoint and always leave the checkpoints enabled because it will save you a ton of time. When something go wrong, you can click, go back to the checkpoint, restore the files, and it will work once more. Notification, context, which over here you can control it. Terminal, of course, we have to execute codes inside the terminals. And here, experimental style, like power steering mode, a language that you want to use there. And, uh, and on top of all the awesome raw code feature that we have right now, we also get the MCB servers, which is created over here. There is a marketplace for it. And you can check what you install over here. And for the people who doesn't know what is the MCB stand for, it actually stands for Module Context Protocol, which is kind of something slightly advanced for AI, but all the stuff is created by the community, almost all of it. And finally, we get the tab for about the Kilo code, and they don't deny that they are building on top of the other extension at all. And now let's get some model to power up the current extension that we will be using. We can always rely on the Google Gemini Flash 2.5 model. They have the free plan tier. It gives you 25 requests per hour. And actually, that's not that bad if you combine it with something like the DeepSeq version 3.1, the free version of it from Open Raptor. We have two options inside it, the shots and the targon. And you can go ahead, create an account on Open Router, and go to keys. Inside keys, you can create a new ABI, give it a name, and put the credit limit that you want. For example, I will give it the deep seek version 3.1, and I will give it blank because it will not, I will leave this blank because I will not be using any money in it. I will copy the ABI key and go to Visual Studio Code. I will tell it create new profile. I will call it deep seek version 3.1, create the profile, select open router, put the ABI key. And right now I can select down here deep seek. I can select the deep seek chat version 3 Mars release over here. And right now it's ready. Click save and done. If you want back to the UI, you can see it actually down there in the models. And as you can see here, also it's written open router deep seek model version 3.1. And with that, we have a model actually that's working. But Kilo could give you $15 for free if you sign up. So go back to the Kilo code.ai website, hit login, sign up with your Google account. After you sign up, it will give you this prompt, open Visual Studio code. And after the prompt in the website, it did give me this message inside the Visual Studio code I will open. And basically, I think it is done. And right now I have only $1 current balance inside Kilo code. You also can verify payment method to get $19 free dollar. And after that, I went back to Visual Studio code, created a new profile from here, and I named it Kilo. And it automatically did give me this kind of ABI provider. They have their own provider. I didn't know that. And it tell you, you get $20 for free. And it automatically selected the Sonnet 3.7 model. So I will hit save. And done, I will go back. Let's test this extension in a real world scenario. I have here this page inside my current project that I'm working on, fixing this kind of missing translation. As you can see here, this is English and the uh, rest of the, almost the page is Arabic, except the naming of this jobs. But I want to change the bending and accept it to an Arabic translation. So in the Kilo code using the UI, it's is almost using raw code. Uh, there is no different at all. You write your prompt, and if you want to append or add context, you hit the add sign, and you can write the name of the file or the folder that you want to use, and it will automatically get attached to the prompt. And you can enhance your prompt using this button, but be careful because you have to edit the configuration for it by going to the edit choice and scroll down and select the ABI configuration. I selected the DeepSeq version 3.1 because it's for free and hit done. And right now when you hit enhance, every time it will use this model only. And instead of using something expensive like the Sonnet 3.7 or the Gemini Pro model, use something like free for uh, enhancing, use something for free that's enhancing the prompts. And let's hit enter and done. Right now, as you can see here, it's written in Arabic instead of English. I know a lot of people that's following me in the channel speak Arabic, so they can verify that's working right now. 
there is a few stuff that's kind of coming from the database itself that's in English, which is kind of wrong. But this is from the database, not inside the UI itself. The first thing that I have noticed in Kilo code, first of all, the science 3.7 that they give us is extremely slow for some reason. I don't know. It took it like three minutes to get this task done. It's not that difficult at all. But I feel like the system prompt is better than the raw code and client. Uh, it's the way that's process the information and handle it. It's very good. Also, as you can see here, how expensive this model is for a simple task like this, we only edit three files or four files and it costs 27 cents. That's a simple task. And also something that I have noticed different in a couple of few days ago, when I was using raw code lately with Gemini, I was struggling to get what I want done. And the problem wasn't in the Gemini model itself. Because if I talk to the Gemini model inside the chat, it kind of very smart, understand what I want, and it gives me the code exactly that I need. But when I go back to raw code and start using the same model, I feel it's slightly dumber. In Kilo code, I don't feel this issue. I don't know how they fixed it, to be honest. But this extension is super good so far. It gives you a free access to Sonnet. It have extreme flexibility and controlling over it like the raw code and it have also the abilities of client integrated inside it because raw code is already built on top of client Here one more simple task using the gemini flash model i'm telling it i want to switch the current image logo that i have to basically link that go to the main website page and I'll hit enter as you can see here the flash model is running like crazy and it's basically almost done and when i click this logo Bam, it's done. As you can see here, this speed of the Gemini Flash model in coding in simple task, it's crazy good and crazy fast. And lately I have been busy or basically care about the speed of the model because I'm getting a lot of smaller bugs that shouldn't take a lot of time in terms of fixing. So the speed is an important key in working with large language model. And I am definitely going to add this extension to the list inside my book. This is one of the pages that I have in chapter three talking about the coding extension editor or AKA plugins. And I kind of created the list based on what this plugin can do for you and the pricing of it, the adaptation, the does it provide models or basically battery. Does it do code compilation or not? And I talked about every single extension on some details like what the bros of it and the cones of it it's need to be updated honestly even the book itself almost done there is a lot of stuff that for extension is coming out that's are crazy good and it's brand new so final keynote do i recommend this kilo code extension yes 100 percent. i don't see any negative about switching from raw code or client to it it's the layout almost the same, the feeling and the vibe almost the same. And I feel like it's a little better in terms of the system prompt. I don't know how to explain it because I didn't read or compare both the system prompt yet, but maybe this is a later video. Speaking about a coming video, the coming video, I'm going to show you how to create a flexible web scraping or crawler using AI. And it's going to be both for free models and paid model. So stay tuned for the coming video. If you like what you have seen and learned something new, please hit like and subscribe for my channel. It helped my channel a ton. It's kind of the only sponsorship that I get right now. You guys leaving comments and leaving like and subscribing for my channel. With that being said, thank you guys for watching and see you on the coming video.